everyone, Tams here. In this video, I want to follow up on a video series I started a couple of weeks ago called Bon Vivant on a Budget. Now, I have explained in my previous videos why I want to do this. In a nutshell, the reason I am doing this is because I believe that the skills that we're already using in our creative life can be applied to our life in general and can help us to be a bon vivant and just to recap a bon vivant is someone who lives a or pursues a luxurious life and in the previous videos I have discussed why I'm doing this and we've talked about mindset which costs us nothing to change in this video we're going to talk about food now before we jump into champagne and caviar and all of that that you may think uh, is the good life in terms of food we're going to cover a few basic things so if you remember in uh, my mindset video I'm going to carry on a lot of themes into each topic that I talk about so today is we're going to talk about food and there are a lot of things that you can do for free that can affect your good life so let's get let's get started I have a list to share with you and let's just go at it so some of these things that I'm going to share with you several of you may think wow that is I already do that um, why are you telling me this uh, and as I go through each one I'm going to just remind you why if you're already doing it it's a great thing and you're ahead of the game and maybe you can pass it on to someone else so how about that all right number one I don't care what kind of china you have, I don't care what the meal is, but the number one key to a luxurious life in terms of eating is sit down and eat at the table. Now some of you may already do this, you may not realize what the benefits are, but there is a ton of research coming out that ex that really just dives into the importance of sitting down and eating at the table. Um, there's a lot of information on how this is good for children, even if you just spend 10 minutes. And I don't care if you don't have, uh, if, if you're using old plates or mixed mash plates, we're not thinking about that right now. We're trying to form some habits so that you can enjoy your life to the fullest. And a big one when it comes to food is sitting down and eating at the table. Now, I'll try to link below the research that I have found online just for families in general. You don't have to be a traditional family. Um, and you don't have to have kids. I believe this extends out to everyone. And in fact, even if I'm eating by myself, I still try, if as long as it's possible, I'll try to set the table and eat at the table. There's so much that you can get out of this. I know it only takes a few minutes and it seems like a lot of work and you've got to clean the dishes and all that kind of thing. It's not. The return on investment on this is huge and I'm hearing it over and over again and I'm sharing it with you because even if you're already doing it there's a lot of people that aren't and if you are doing it and you understand where I'm coming from maybe pass it on to someone maybe a young family that is pulled in a lot of directions and working two jobs and they just don't get it because when they sit down their kids are fighting or they're ready to get up and go play on their mobile device but just just remind them what a return on investment of that time even if it's just five or ten minutes what it means to them uh, this is such a foundational thing and whenever and however I can encourage it I will do so so number one is sit at the table to eat regularly number two take the time to plate your food um, make it pretty this helps with it's a little thing but one of the big things this helps with is portion control and digestion so you're already sitting at the table go ahead and plate your food set the table put down a napkin put down your flatware and a glass of whatever you are going to drink. We'll get to drink later on. Um, but plate your food. It will make you feel good and again with the portion control it will help you with portion control. You're most likely to eat slower with, your uten with proper utensils 
and again we'll get back to the quality versus quantity and you know I'm big on cloth napkins and I think it just makes you feel better to see a nice presentation number three now we hear this all the time and this has to do with meal planning and this touches on the budget part of Bon Vivant on a budget there are so many benefits to meal planning and I don't mean you have to plan out your entire month or anything like that there's just some simple things you can do like even you know in the morning as part of your daily routine you can go ahead and ask yourself what am I going to have for dinner tonight you can go ahead and thaw out things that you might need or if you need to run to the grocery store on the way home you can do that but you already just knowing what you're gonna have for dinner ahead of time is such a good uh, stress reliever it really works and this doesn't take a lot of time and there's tons of systems out there to help you there's tons of videos on YouTube to help you with meal planning what I use if you're interested is I got into uh, last year something called a capsule menu and I got this idea from a lady named Sharon Abels and she is she has a channel and a blog and a podcast called the simply luxurious life and I will link below all the information about her um, capsule menu but essentially you just kind of make a list for each season so we're in summer now and you make a list of some of the things that you cook regularly and you just make yourself comfortable with repetition and you'll switch it out as the seasons come and go and you try to work in some fresh fruits and vegetables that are in season so I have really found a lot of good luck with using a capsule menu and um, the Simply Luxurious Life I get a lot of inspiration from that uh, I get a lot of inspiration for all of this. I'm going to share with you from the Simply Luxurious Life, Diane in Denmark, who incorporates the Fly Lady system, which includes meal planning and that sort of thing. And not only does this um, does meal planning help you just relieve some stress, it's also good for your wallet. So you're, you, you are able to not have to do these last minute trips or trips out of convenience because you didn't think to thaw out maybe some chicken or whatever it was and you just run through the store and get some convenience food that's very expensive um, so really consider meal planning I know a lot of people talk about this but I think it's really important now also under this meal planning a step uh, and I got this idea also from the Simply Luxurious Life uh, she really knows how to make meal planning n feel more uh, luxurious, for lack of a better word. <laughs> um, one of the things she really promotes, and it's something that I've been doing, is the idea of stocking and shopping your kitchen. And she doesn't call a pantry a pantry, she calls it an epicerie and she has on her website a list of things that you should have in your epicerie and if you have these things on hand all the time and these are not expensive things these are like basic things you get from the grocery store but if, if you have them on hand at all times you're able to make just about anything so what I have been doing I have been following this and I usually go to do one big grocery shopping trip once a month to get the basic items or replenish the basic items that are in the my epicerie and then during the week if I need fresh vegetables or fruit I'll stop and just get something fresh like that and it makes life so much easier you don't have to think too much about it I really recommend this and if you're interested in seeing how I have my kitchen set up and I'm I've uh, been sharing on Instagram stories a lot of how I'm incorporating this into my own lifestyle I'll be happy to make a video I have been really doing an overhaul of my pantry or my cabinet where I store a lot of food so if you're interested in that let me know below and I'll expand on this a little more and do like a kitchen tour video and also expand on what my capsule menu is and this also requires you to be creative it's kinda like going into your craft room and you have a bunch of materials and you want to come up with something different so you, 
are you getting the the idea and why I think the skills you use in your creative life can carry over into your regular life okay number four is cook in bulk uh, so many of us I get it it's a modern world we're in the Western world we don't always have time to do everything perfectly in a day we're working some of you are shuffling uh, kids around what have you or you're involved in extra activities or you're really involved in your career and you're working late hours what have you so you've got to be smart again this is touching on what we talked about in mindset which is work smarter not harder and one of the things that I do is I cook in bulk so I don't cook every night but I also have cut out processed foods so I don't eat out of convenience especially during the week there are some splurges here and there but mostly during the week I am cooking my meals and what I'll do is I because I plate my food I will usually have leftovers and I can do another plate and put it in the fridge and heat it up the next night so I think about um, cooking in bulk and extending out the meal a little bit I also do something called stretching and probably one of the best examples of stretching is roast chicken. So you can cook an entire roast chicken. It's um, There's tons of recipes. I love the Barefoot Contessa recipe. It's a very inexpensive meal. Uh, you can So your first meal that you cook in bulk would be maybe a roast chicken with potatoes and carrots and it makes your house smell wonderful. Or even if you don't have time to cook a full roast chicken, you can go to one of these stores now and they have roast chicken. And the first night, maybe you eat the breast, breast meat. And this is what I mean about stretching. So maybe the second night, you shred up the rest of the chicken and you either do a chicken casserole or maybe just a simple chicken salad. In the summer, I kind of like colder foods. And this is, we're getting back to our capsule menu. So I usually have like a salad night and that can be a tossed salad, a tuna salad, a chicken salad, what have you. So maybe the second day with the roast chicken, you shred it up and you have a chicken salad and don't throw the carcass away because you can make um, chicken stock with that and then save that and put it in your freezer so that's what I mean by stretching bulk cooking you really only cooked once uh, but you got several things out of that one time cooking and as far as cooking your own food don't be afraid to work in easy nights or freezer nights uh, so in your bulk cooking you may have put aside uh, a little bit in the freezer uh, don't be afraid to pull that out for one night you, you got to think about again if you're thinking about in the morning what you're going to have and you say oh I have this leftover chicken casserole that I froze I can go ahead and take that out and thaw it and I've got a meal you add some salad and you're good to go and don't look down on maybe what's an easy night one of my favorite meals is just soup and sandwich or breakfast for dinner <laughs> and there's things that you can do to make it special I know growing up as a kid I love soup and sandwich night because what my mom would do is she would cut the sandwiches up into little like tea sandwiches and I we would have like a variety of tea sandwiches and some soup and I thought yeah, that was the best meal ever because you're sitting at the table you've got a table setting and the food is fun it was easy and what could be more special or luxurious than that and sharing it with people you love so don't be afraid of easy meals I always have a soup and sandwich meal planned out and sometimes it's a grilled cheese and tomato uh, sometimes it's a proper you know I've cooked like a chili or a big chicken and vegetable soup and people love it I, I don't know anybody that doesn't love soup and sandwich um, so there you go number five we're gonna touch on drink and I'm probably gonna split this video up into two because today we're just talking about basic easy fundamental things that you can do right now without costing too much money so before we get into things like wine and cocktails and all those things that we should associate with fine dining whatever I want you to do try if you're not trying it already try this one simple thing try to cut out soda and just drink ice water this is one of the easiest simplest things that you can do both for your health 
your well-being, and your wallet. Uh, several years ago, I cut out sodas, and I was just drinking diet sodas, so it wasn't calories necessarily, but I intentionally cut them out and started drinking more water at all my meals, and it was not the easiest transition, but it's not as hard as you think. There are a couple of days in there where you have to kind of wean yourself off of it, but the benefits have been wonderful. Since I cut out sodas, I feel amazing. So much so that now, like sometimes we'll have a splurge or something at the beach and you'll get a soda or whatever. I totally do not feel good <laughs> after I have. So these days now, I may have half a soda just, just for fun every now and then where years ago I would drink so much soda, so much diet soda in a day, it just was not good for me. So before you start adding any kind of fancy drink or anything like that, just start uh, serving some water. Put it in a nice glass. I put mine in a wine glass with ice just about every night during the week and it's fine. Uh, it's fun. Try it. I think you'll like it. It may be hard the first couple of days but once you get used to it, I don't think you'll go back. But we'll see. Give it a try. Okay, number six. Once you've gotten these basic, fundamental things taken care of, many of these things you may be doing already. I know I've mentioned that. If you are, please consider yourself ahead of the game because so many people are not doing it anymore. They don't realize the value of it. They may not think it's worth the time to set tables, wash dishes, whatever. And again, I'm going to link below, there's so much information coming out on how important this is in so many ways for your family, for yourself. Uh, it's a great way for you to transition from your day to your evening, maybe not carry the bad stuff from your day into tomorrow, which is a new start. Um, and it's so good for your health and digestion, portion control, all of that. There's I could go on and on. There's so much information out there. But once you've got all these basic things, you're sitting at the table, you're plating your food, you're drinking water, you have not stressed about the meal that you've prepared. It's been planned and it's healthy and it fits your budget. The next thing you can start doing is going for the extra, what I call the extras. So the extras, number six. This is when you go a little bit further and you start making it pretty. Now you can start maybe thinking about how what you're using on the table. Maybe if you add some flowers. Maybe if you play some music in the background. Up to you. Do you light some candles? Um, do you take the time to learn a new cuisine each month and just uh, be adventurous with your cooking and your food? Um, now you're ready. But make sure you get the first five things into uh, your routine and it becomes a habit. Don't freak out if you skip. We all, we're not perfect people, but as long as we try, and again, these are all things that are free. Um, use what you have, but get in the habit. Make sure you're sitting at a table, even if you're by yourself. And you'll see that on Instagram, my Instagram stories, I often share when I have to eat by myself and I still set the table. So eat at the table, plate your food, portion control, plan your meals out, drink more water, and then we go for the extra stuff. And again, I'm going to expand on this topic in the future, uh, do a little bit more of the fancier stuff and how you can incorporate the fancier stuff into your life on a budget. But for this video, this first video on food, I did wanna just touch on basic stuff that anybody can do. So I hope you enjoyed and um, these videos have been getting a lot of good feedback, both the videos I do on YouTube, the stories I share on Instagram. So let me know what you think. I hope that you see that there's a correlation between the skills you use in your creative life and how you can take those over into your everyday life and make life a little more enjoyable and a little more special. So I will see you next time we'll be talking about some other things but again if you want me to expand more on the my capsule menu and how i shop my own kitchen just leave me a comment below and i'll expand on that 
Until then, I will be sharing some little snippets on my Instagram stories. So make sure you're following me on Instagram if you're interested in this sort of thing. Thank you so much for your uh, indulging me in this topic, and I will see you uh, later. Bye.